Hello, this is Team 1085. My name is Diego Sinega. The two other members are Christian Guerrero and Eric Leon. Our coach is Professor Nathaniel Wiggins, and we're from San Jacinto College. So the Deepwater Horizon incident affected our beaches in Florida, Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi. With that incident, these clumps of oil are released onto the surface of the beaches and then return, mix in with the sediment of the sand and either stay on the surface of the beach or get buried in with the sand to at least 50 centimeters. When buried in, the buried in clumps of oil experience a new type of decay on top of what they already experienced naturally, and that's microbial decay. The only factors affecting this decay rate are depth, porosity, and oxygen present. So the learning objective of this problem is to create a model that accounts for depth and porosity of the SOA, or in, or in other words, the clump of oil that gets mixed in with the sediments. We're gonna look for the mass over time and as well estimate when, how long it'll take for that specific mass to reach 10% of its mass and as well the impact of removing a top layer of beach sediment. So terminology. SSOAs are the main ones where we acquired our data from, but SOAs are the free roam natural ones that appear from the incident onto the beaches of the areas described above. So SRBs were an attempt to acquire data for SOAs that weren't buried into the sand, but rather on the surface. However, it wasn't a year, a year in, and the SRBs were lost. So the SOAs contain in total 33.7 grams, but in our model, we will be looking primarily at what makes up the petroleum and that being the alkanes, PAHs, and carbons. We started at time zero since the SOA landed at the beach surface with an initial mass M0. This initial mass is 4.82 grams. Time is a dependent variable in our model, depicting time starting at zero since the clump of oil mixes in with the sand of the beach surface and begins at this, its decay process, and it, it is measured in days. Porosity being one of our other variables in our model shows it affects the decay rate from microbes. The expression shown is how porosity affects the decay rate. And according to the paper and at the data, it looks primarily at how permeable the SOA is to letting oxygen through. And this oxygen in return, it gives a boost to microbe decay rate. And now we begin constructing the model. Uh, we start by realizing that the rate at which mass changes with respect to time is negative, um, which lets us set up this differential equation that the derivative of mass with respect to time is equal to a negative uh, proportionality constant times the mass. Um, we can solve this as a separation of variables and rearrange the terms to get mass on one side and dt on the other. Uh, we then go ahead and integrate both sides of the equation and we're left with the natural log of mass is equal to the negative k uh, times time plus an integration constant c uh, which we group from both sides into this one constant. Next we start solving for mass, um, do a little algebra to rearrange the constant and we arrive at mass is equal to the constant c times e raised to the negative kt. Uh, recognizing that this integration constant c is equal to our, our initial mass, we substitute m0 into the equation. Now we explore how depth plays a role in the decay rates of these buried uh, SSOAs. Um, in the uh, study, it's established that reference SOAs, which were controlled for uh, sunlight temperature and humidity uh, experience minimal to no uh, microbial activity and therefore the decay rate they found for those reference SOAs can be attributed to just a baseline decay rate that any SOA experiences. The study also uh, demonstrates that the decay rates of buried SSOs, uh, SSOAs in the field experienced a higher 
total decay rate than just the baseline. Uh, this leads us to an expression where the total decay rate is equal to a reference decay rate plus a total uh, microbial uh, decay rate. Um, we express that as k sub t equals k sub m plus k sub r, and we input that to the model. Porosity is the percentage for the ability of stuff small enough to pass through the sediments, and in this case, the beach surface has a porosity of 49%. With that being said, it allows the presence of more oxygen to help the microbes attack the clump of oil. The variable that will affect just the rate of microbes represented by K sub A is being multiplied by this expression to affect the rate in either a negative or positive way, depending on the porosity of the surrounding sediments or of the clump itself. Porosity in this beach sediment was calculated to be 49%, but in theory, it should only be 47.6% in clump sediments as seen in figure 2.1 of packed arrangements. You can see the cubic is 47.6% theoretically, and that's the highest it'll go. So they had a 1.4% margin of error in calculating the porosity for this beach surface. The model we produced and added on to follows the decay of hydrocarbons and petroleum in the SSOAs we acquired our, our information from. These hydrocarbon hydrocarbons were alkanes, PAHs, and carbons themselves. After reading thoroughly, we found out that the clump of oil, once buried into the sand, will begin to decay on itself naturally, but there will be an outside force speeding up this decay, and that was the microbes. We know porosity to be 49%, and assuming the entire beach surface is homogeneous, that would mean we would keep this 49% constant anywhere on that beach surface when calculating how much mass it will lose over a certain amount of time. Now let's find how to determine the mass of an SSOA over time. Now to solve for the mass of these petroleum hydrocarbons, in the, SO, in the buried SOAs, um, we need to solve for K sub T, which would be the total decay rate. Um, we, we do this by using two data points, the, the initial mass at time equals zero days, and the final mass uh, at time equals 1,152 days. Um, using these values, uh, we'll input it into the, into the equation. But first, we have to rearrange, rearrange the original one to solve for negative k of t. And, and we get the equation negative k sub t is equal to natural log of the final mass divided by the initial mass all over uh, time. And when we put our, our values, we get out a decay rate of 0 0.000786. Uh, now we just substitute in the, the numerical value of k sub t and we get the simplified uh, uh, decay rate uh, ex uh, exp equation. And when we input uh, years and uh, expressed in days, um, we get data points for one year, two year, three year, four year, and five year. And when we compare these data points to the, to the study's original um, uh, uh, data, we find that ours is just a little bit faster at decaying the mass. And it's due to that we have a slightly higher uh, decay rate than what they use for, for their equation. So in order to find out how long to it's at 10% of, of its mass, we need to solve for T. So we will start by dividing the final mass by the initial mass. So we have final mass divided by the initial mass on the left side and e to the negative, negative k sub t times t on the right side. Then we take the natural logs of both sides. And finally, we divide by negative kt and all we're left with is t equals ln of the final mass divided by the initial mass. All of that divided by negative k sub t. We plug in our initial values where at 10% of its mass would be 0 0.482 grams divided by 4.82 grams. The natural log of that is negative 
divide that by negative k of t or k sub t and you would get 2,929 days converted into years for a salt in eight years. Now let's look into how removing a top layer of sand would mitigate the long-term effects of these uh, hydrocarbons. It, it's established in the experiment that the upper 50 centimeters of sediment are exposed to a concentration of oxygen greater than 50%. And the paper shows that this oxygen concentration is crucial for aerobic microbial decay. Um, so if you were to remove a top layer of sand, you would also then expose a deeper layer of SSOAs to more oxygen. Um, because it, it would still be 50 centimeters from the surface. Uh, if we take 10 centimeters as, as the amount we remove from the top as an example, uh, then SSOAs that were previously at 60 centimeters would experience a boost to their microbial decay rates thanks to the fact that the SSOAs at 60 centimeters are exposed to higher concentrations of oxygen, which allows for uh, greater microbial decay. Um, we can relate the difference in time, which we signify with delta T, as equal to the new time it would take to de decay the, these hydrocarbons, thanks to the increased microbial decay, minus the original time uh, it would take without the help of uh, an increase in uh, oxygen availability. And so substituting in the, the equation for time and factoring out the common expression as we do um, on point three, we, we get a delta t that is equal to this, this term. Uh, but notice if we structure the question to be, uh, what would the reduction in time be to remove a certain percentage um, uh, of sand? Uh, when we plug in that percentage, it, the term natural log of mass over initial mass it will simplify to a constant. And we, we're left with the simple expression that the change in time is equal to some constant times one over the new decay rate minus one over the original decay rate. Now onto what our model does well. Uh, our model is derived from data uh, that tracked the decay of, of crude oil uh, throughout three years in great detail. Um, our model is also takes into consideration different sources of decay, and it kind of gives us a little bit more detail than other models that might not have do it the same. And onto the limitations of the model. Uh, porosity uh, is tracked linearly, which might not be the most accurate uh, representation of how gas exchange affects the the, the microbial decay rate. Um, our model also allows for greater uh, theoretical maximum of porosity, uh, which uh, according to our source too, uh, we, we constructed variable P in, in order to get achieve that goal of a one-to-one -one comparison with our data to the data from the, uh, from the experiment. Um, but also, since our data is derived from the ex from that experiments of source one, we also have the same limitations. Uh, and one of the ones they cite in the paper is that uh, the data is a little bit um, affected by sudden boosts of, of microbial activity, mainly due uh, to boosts of nutrition, which can be attributed to like rainstorms depositing uh, nutrition to the these microbes in, in the, the oil clumps as well as like deposits of organic material um, it, it makes the data sporadic and maybe a little bit harder to describe by a model such as ours 
This study, or in general, this model gives us new insight on how to handle environmental issues that deal with crude oil. It, it doesn't have to be specific towards the deep water incident. It can be towards any type of oil incident around the world to show us the decay rates or at least how long these issues would continue in these ecosystems. And these are our references. Source one is where we primarily got our data for the SSOAs and for our model. And source two is what allowed us to find the theoretical porosity that a certain sediment area would have, but theirs was a little off from source one by 1.4%. Thank you for watching our presentation. This is problem A, team 1085.